to our new homestead. We are very glad that you are here and today we are going to show you around and expose you to some of the really exciting new features at new homes here these days. Some that totally surprised me that I was unaware of and some that did not really surprise me I was aware of but this is the first time that we have them in the property we own. So stick around if you want to see what new building has to offer to you and how to wire a new dryer. Welcome friends to our new location. As we told you last week, we sold the homestead and we bought a new property and here you are in this property today. Now we're doing a very different episode today because as we moved into this house we found a lot of unique very interesting very useful features that we were unaware i didn't know they existed to be mm -hmm. honest right yeah a couple of them i did but most of them i did not so what we're going to do today is take you around the property and show you those interesting things internal and external that i believe add value to your life and make the things you have to do easier and, and quicker right mm -hmm. so come with us you are still my favorite viewer and this is going to be a very fun episode Another neat thing about this house is this uh, recept not receptacles, uh, light switches, light coves, yeah, switch <laughs> coves, whatever you want to call them, which have a very unique uh, feature. You remove the top, and you don't need tools to remove it, uh, but you cannot do it by hand. You need something to give you a little leverage, right? Okay, and so there's just a couple of little holding clips there that you can see. But you don't need the screwdriver to unscrew anything, right? It's just right. It's just pressure fitted. Pressure fitted, okay. And then you see that little blue thing. Okay. You pull this out. Ah. And now. When I didn't do it on camera, it was very easy. <laughs> the whole thing comes out. Okay. And you can change it. For example, you can put a dimmable one. Mm -hmm. You do not have to use any tools. You do not have to cut the power down. As you see, there are no connectors here. There is nothing you can electrocute yourself, you know. Oh, that's nice. It's and just then, that when you buy this, you need to buy this variety, right. but in the different configuration that right. you're looking for. So it can be, for example, a Wi-Fi switch. You can turn it on and off remotely. There are really an endless possibility. And... Uh, in some of them, I would definitely do it. I mean, we're just in the house, so everything is um, builder. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show you this because I've never seen that before. Have yeah. you, Alpida? No, I have never seen that. So that's it's very similar to a plug and play, like as far as a... And now it's working. Uh, your switch in your right. electrical box. So you just plug it in and go, right? And we are not sponsored, but it's called Deco.com. Deco is the company that makes this. Okay. And the only thing, if you have one, there is an up and down side. And I don't know if I did it the wrong way before, and that's why it was a little harder Could be. to get. Could be. So now we put it the correct way. And as you can see, it's nice now. Mm -hmm. It's done, right? It's flush. It's snug. There's, it's not going to wiggle off the wall. And I like the flat ones as compared to the, what they call the pole switches. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a neat feature that I was not aware existed, were you? No, I was not aware, and I, I think it's pretty cool, too. And all of the switches, even the three switches, like when we have multiple switches, like if you come around here. Oh. So you can change them. Each of them can be on a timer, mm -hmm. or you can time two together, or, you know, you can do all kinds of interesting things. Okay. You can have a dimmer. Mm -hmm. Anything you can imagine. Now, there's a caveat with everything, right? These are not $1.99 switches. Or a dollar or whatever. Right. Cheapo. Mm -hmm. So this will be more, and I don't know, I haven't bought them yet, but I can I can guarantee you they're not just because of what I sold you, right? I mean, mm -hmm. It would take a little extra money, but for the convenience and not having to hire an electrician, I think it pays for itself. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because for many people, especially if you want to do something complex, for example, make this a three-way switch. You don't need to rewire anything. You just take the single switch and you put it, you have to buy two switches. And then put the other one somewhere else and you just make it three-way switch, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the variability and the flexibility and the utility, I think, is very, very good, so. 
All right, another cool feature is here on the control switch. And this house is zoned. So we have two different uh, zones, right? Now, as you see, once you touch it, it lights up. Mm -hmm. Is that visible? Yep. It's totally controllable. And it is, again, Wi-Fi controlled. So you can be away, for example, on vacation. You want to come back to a cool house or a really warm house because you left it on maintenance mode. You can get on your phone, mm -hmm. program it, right? And as you can see, it, it has all the normal functions, you know, cool. And I don't want to go through cool, them. Cool, heat, auto, yeah. that sort of thing. Fan, you can turn the fan on manually. You can do an right. auto fan. And of course you can make a schedule. Mm -hmm. You can log your screen. The Z-Wave setup is that wireless thing. Okay. You can change the brightness. You can set the clock. You can close the day. Anything you know you want to do. Awesome. So it's a very good, and it shows you humidity, which I like. It doesn't show it right now, but when it switches to the standby mode, it shows you the temperature and the humidity and the time. Okay. Awesome. And now you can see it has the humidity there. Mm -hmm. So the temperature, humidity, yeah. yeah. It went away. Well, I'm sorry for that. It has a delay, so we're not going to sit here waiting, but as you saw, there was a humidity reading, which I, is something I like. Some people might not like. So another cool thing is the electronic locks. And there is nothing new about them, but this house came with one already. Mm -hmm. And of course you can set your, your pad, you can set up to 10 combinations. So if you want to give a temporary access to someone and then delete it, not give them your permanent, you can. And also this is controllable by uh, Wi-Fi and uh, remote, like internet access. So you can lock your door. You're leaving on vacation and three hours out. Don't ask me how I know that. None of you locked the door, right? Uh -huh. So you turn to your significant other, hey, sweetie, did you lock the door? I thought you locked the door, right? One of those situations that never happened to all of any of us, right? No, no. These are unique situations. Mm -hmm. Well, one of you gets on your phone app and now your house is locked. Yeah, very cool. Another neat feature for us is the tankless water heater. And we've been in the house now a couple of days, and I can tell you there's always been a concern in top on forums about taking forever for the thing to to get your in your faucets. Not true. This is faster than any tank I ever had. Okay, that's awesome. Now this is not necessarily a new new thing, but it was new to me. And I'm excited about the garage. And anyway. by new to you, you mean you've never had one right. in the house before. You were aware that a tankless water heater existed, a tankless on demand, but you've never had one before. And I, I, till recently, I think builders would not put them in mm -hmm. because they were more expensive. And I think this builder is a little more higher end than the other builders. Well, and they try to do things. I think now everything is moving toward the green certification. They want to do things that are more environmentally friendly. Yeah. And definitely these tankless heaters are. And this is a very nice brand. It's a Renai, correct? Yeah. So um, I knew about Renai years and years ago. Um, so they've been around a good long time. Uh, I knew it was a really good brand and I'm glad to hear that your experience so far is... Another fun thing for those of you that might not have a, a, what, a tankless water heater, if you can see, this looks like a little jet engine. You might want to go on the side so they can see the side. This is the exhaust vent. And because it uses a lot of power behind it, mm -hmm. it really looks like a small jet engine, doesn't it? Yeah. So I just want to show it. Nothing really exciting. The rest of the vents are boring like any other vent, but that one is really exciting vent. It's a little bit different because, and it is gas, this particular one correct. is gas, correct? So that's probably why that vent is that way. In this particular one, we've used it and it's almost instant, not quite instant, but faster than any tanked okay. water heater. The cool thing is the garage door openers. Again, nothing exciting about that other than they are controlled from your phone as well. Uh huh. Okay. So if we're in the same scenario and, and you say, yes, dear, I locked the front door. How about the garage doors? Are they down? The app will tell you if they're up or down and you can open them or close them, you know? Okay, very so cool. A wonderful, wonderful way. And the last thing is the electrical panel that has some features I've not seen before. You see most of the units here have what's called arc, arc, arc protection. A-R-C, arc protection. Mm -hmm. See the test button? So what arc protection is, have you ever seen when you put a plug in and you see a spark? Uh-huh. 
in uh, sensitive electronics that can damage your equipment, like TVs and things like that, all the circuits you can put sensitive electronics are arc protected. You notice there are a few uh, circuits that they're not because they're just only lights and they don't need arc protection, mm -hmm. right? The other really cool thing is this little device that I've never seen, I didn't know existed. And that is a whole house surge protection. Whole house surge protection. Yeah, so if, okay. if, a li if lighting hits the house and comes through the panel, this will cut all the circuits off. Oh, nice. So Instead there will be no damage to your... Not blowing all your circuits and all right. the wiring. Amazing. And we have a couple of more things to show you, but you know, this so far to me has been very interesting. How about you, Alpida? Oh yeah, really nice. And I have a nice uh, expandability here, as you can see. Mm -hmm. We're going to use two of them. We're going to put a fast charger for our electrical cars. Right. So we'll need the 240 for that. And you simply download the app. They were nice to leave it with the uh, emergency relief cord. This by itself is not anything extra. Everyone has it, right? Right. But you download the app and now you have immediate access to everything you want. The rest of it has been very common for everything we had in the past. So we'll go around and show you something that I find really, really intriguing. Another thing that I've never had before, I, I've never experienced, was this panel. Are you familiar with this panel, no. Miss Alpida? What is this panel? See those little tubies? Tubies, okay. This is a pest control system. The pest company comes, connects to all tubes, and then they spray the chemical and it sprays inside the walls versus outside, uh -huh. which makes it totally safe for your animals. Uh -huh. more likely for any insects that they got into your ghost to be, be uh, killed because uh -huh. usually they're not going to be in the outside of the world they will be inside right right that's where the damage is and they can do it while you're in vacation you don't even have to be in the house they don't have to come and do anything inside right because it is all outside so okay. now i don't think this is something you can retrofit i don't know because i've never seen it mm -hmm. but definitely it was built in this house and i'm very happy happy it was yeah built that's a really house. nice feature so i love this option right yeah and i don't think you've seen it either until now i have not this is the first time and i think that's a very cool thing um in fact i always wondered why they weren't putting pest control in the walls in new construction because i've done a lot of research on how to build houses and using different construction techniques and that's always been a question in my mind so this is a very cool innovation that they've done. In, it says building pest control system yeah i think you can see it from there right mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very nice, totally unaware it existed kind of thing. Another interesting feature is the, those lights. And at the first look, they might look just like normal recessed lights, but they're not. These are one piece lights. So when that burns, you replace the whole thing. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So they're LEDs, which means very low consumption of power, which is w wonderful. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, I had not seen them before. I don't know if you had. I had not. That is a new feature to me. LED also means they should last a long time, but in the event they burn, then what? Then you replace the thing. You replace the whole thing right. and not just a bulb. Correct. Okay, so it's everything around it. Not yeah, just actually the, the middle part unscrews. Uh -huh. And then there are two screws that go to the box. The, okay. Like and that. that's it. I mean, okay, cool. it should be very straightforward. And one of the neat things that the builder did as you can see, there are five, uh, maybe you cannot see it, but there are five lights on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they are controlled by two switches because the middle light is already wired to be a fan. Okay. Oh, awesome. So this one, so we've got one, two, three, four here, and the middle one can be a fan. Yep. And they didn't give us a fan because? They don't do that anymore because people like to put their own fans and they, they were wasted. In other words, they would okay. take them down and put new fans and... Okay. This is our temporary TV setting because this is another thing that they do with new smart homes, right? As you can see, there is this cover here, this plastic cover, mm -hmm. and there is power there so you can put a TV on the wall. And that's what we plan to do, right? Put mm -hmm. our TV on the wall. But what this is for, that is so everything is hidden. All the cables are hidden, right? Okay. So this is a chase that comes all the way down there into the other plastic cover. And that allows you to have all the cables hidden on the wall. Mm -hmm. So it's nice and neat. And the chase next to it, you see there are two chases. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we get like uh, fiber or any new thing, this goes to the basement and allows access. It does, there is no basement, to the scroll space. And for those of 
us who are not knowledgeable about what a chase actually is, it's more like a tube or like a PVC pipe or something like that that goes from the top all the way down to the bottom that allows an opening and access to keep your all of your wiring right. hidden, which like we currently have that wiring showing, but that's temporary. Right, right that's temporary because we don't have fiber here yet. Right. This neighborhood is being developed as we speak. But the second one, the second cover, mm -hmm goes to the scroll space. We are in, in the south and we don't have basements. We have scroll spaces. Crawl spaces, oh, not sorry, scroll. Not scroll. scroll. <laughs> yeah, crawl spaces and they're named such because you generally have to crawl through them. Right, they, they're not high enough for you to walk. Right. Otherwise it would be a walk space. Right, or, or, a, basement. or a basement. <laughs> yeah. So that goes there. So when, when fiber comes to the neighborhood, all they have to do is go from there to here, you know. Uh -huh. And then you're, you're and then you don't have to make holes and, and break the system. Mm -hmm. And I and I like that. Yeah. That idea. That's a very nice feature. All right. Next, the, right. next to see you here. We are in our laundry room, and of course, one of the easiest things when you move in a new house is to plug in your other appliances, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go, and let's plug it in. And Peter, something doesn't look right here. Hmm. No, it does not. What is what is the deal here? Well, that is something you might have to face if you move. Depending on the builder, they put either a four wire two forty plug or a three wire. And by wire, sometimes these are referred to as prongs, right? Right, but I'm talking about the wire plug. Right. See that has four. Yeah, but it's still it considered only three. a prong. Right. So we have to change this. So that's something you might need to be prepared to do in your new homestead as well. Mm -hmm. All right, here we are at the bath back of our uh, dryer. Dryer, and all dryers can be wired up for three or four, as you can see. The instructions are right there, and all of them will have. It might not be in the exact position as ours, but close to where the the cable goes in, or if it is brand new, this will be an open port, right? Mm -hmm. There is a, a plate that you have to remove. An access panel. Yeah. And really, this is overkill. You don't need the tool. You don't, but that's what we have on hand. So. And as you can see now, we have our, our three cables there, the three three wires. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to consult the, the diagram because I haven't done it for a long time. But the first step, of course, is to remove the three cables of the old one. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put the new one, right? Okay. And you can see that it does have a ground wire, right? Yes, they will have a ground wire, Just and that is the only um, tricky part. This usually goes in the middle, we have to attach it there, because the, the fork cable has a, an independent wire. We'll take a look at that diagram, I just want to make sure that everybody knows for this purpose, there is supposed to be a ground wire. To keep your it was the first thing that I moved, was the ground all right, let us, sorry. And so now your old cable just comes off. Okay. We're going to get our new cable and we're going to get right. The first you. thing you do is you need to pass all four now cables instead of three through your uh, little opening there. Mm -hmm. And we can start uh, connecting them, but first connect the I guess it doesn't make a difference if it is first or second. No, but I'm just gonna start with it because. And again, a reminder, they have, most every, every dryer I had had the diagram outside. Mm -hmm. Dryers, in case you didn't know, do not come with a cable cord. Exactly for this purpose, because they don't know what you will have, right? Mm -hmm. And clearly in our previous location, we had the three, on this one we had the four. So, that is okay. I'm going to take the white ground wire and move it to the middle position per that diagram and also align that with the white wire that's coming in from the new. And then put a, a screw through both of them and then, oh man, screw it, right? Right. Uh, that was an attempted joke, guys. I might not be the best funny person, but I try. Now it's important when you put that, those cables that they don't touch each other, they have to be totally clear totally down there we go 
because if you touch it, you're going to make an immediate sword, right? Mm -hmm. And trust me, you don't want that. And so again, you can see that I move that down so that it's away from. And in some instances, those are both black. It really doesn't make difference. The black and the red are both hot. Well, but our diagram specifically tells us to put one in one side, the other in the other. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do. Right. But technically it doesn't matter because they are both hot, right? That's it's a 240. Yeah. It has two hot and a neutral, unlike one hot and neutral and ground, you know? Yeah. If that made any sense? Does it make sense? Yeah, let's try to get these all positioned here. The wires are a little bit... Uh... So while technically it makes no difference, I recommend you do what the diagram says, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So we have black to black, red to red, mm -hmm. we have white to white, and now we're going to move the, the green, this the is green to green. ground. Mm -hmm. So, Pina, how hard was this? Is this something you recommend a beginner to start? This is super easy. Because an electrician will charge you some serious money yeah. to do this. So, there is no need to spend your money on this, right? Yeah, and the diagram's right here. So, it's very super easy to follow. And then, as you can see, we have this lined up exactly the way it had on there. Green, red, white. We did move our original white grounding wire behind the new one and then black and that's exactly how it shows us on that diagram and the last thing we have to do is install the relief for the cable which is here sorry for the earthquake guys and that helps the cable from uh, getting frayed or moved right okay. this is not going to be the prettiest thing in the world but its purpose is to prevent accidentally pulling the cord and creating a problem right okay and these are thicker cables than you're used to normally, like the Ronex 12 and 14. Yeah. Because these carry a lot of current, like 30 amps. Okay. Do you have clearance? I don't know. I'm also lefty here and... So a little more challenging for me because I'm not left-handed. You want to close the top because the bottom you're not threaded yet. I'm trying to get it lined up is what I'm trying to do here. This which is a, a strain relief for the cable. Mm -hmm. And now we're putting back the, the little cover. Which interesting enough the... oh no I was reading it wrong I thought the writing was upside down on the panel. But I was wrong. No, not you. Yeah. And of course, we hope now it will work after all this, right? Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> See if that actually works, right? Okay. Well, the plug goes in. Okay. Does it come on? Yes. Excellent. We have power. Fantastic. Next project. <laughs> all right. If you remember at our old homestead, we actually framed the deck and we put a roof over it and we were ready to put screens to make it a screen port, right? This is already here and I'm only mentioning that because well, we just remembered it, right? <laughs> this is not anything new or exciting. No. It's... This is just a nice, for us, we're excited about all the, the things we have. It's a nice feature that the builder included as part of this new construction home as opposed to just having an open deck which we do have a part of that as well um, and I say we um, it's uh, professor DIY and mrs. DIY and the weekends is you yeah the <laughs> um, so they do have an open deck as well but it's just really nice to move into a house and already have this enclosed space to make it easy especially because we've got like I don't know super bionic mosquitoes in this area or no, something the other place I haven't seen any here well, it's North Carolina as a general construct. Um, but anyway, this is a nice little spot to be able to come out here and enjoy the breeze. Well, friends, this is our episode for today. And we apologize, it's not a build, but we have been beyond crazy. We had to close two properties. One we sold, one we bought. 
we have to clean one property, we have to move into the other. So really we don't have enough time and the rest of the day today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the day after after tomorrow, <laughs> we'll have to be trying to finish to move in and, and fix things, you know? So we did not have time in all honesty to have a project, but we're going to have a new project for you next week. And we hope you enjoy this little walkthrough of our new home and the modern features that I at least was not aware of. From Professor DIY and Elpida, let's have fun together.